Okay, I think Harriet's joining, but we might make a start. We're going to start lying down, We're doing a little bit of hip stuff today. So I offer you, oh, I offer you to knock my microphone over, uh, lying down in Vadakanasana. So soles of the feet together. This is where two blocks can be quite nice. You can take, you could use a cushion or something as well, a, you know, just off the sofa, but just put something under your thighs to, to hold a little bit underneath you. And if you find it's too much, adjust the legs accordingly. everyone and we'll begin. So yes, lying on the back, find a comfortable position, Badakanasana legs with the soles of the feet pressed together to begin to breathe a little more consciously into the front and the sides of the hips. I find it's quite useful to put my hands on my hips, but this is really personal. So have a feel around if that works for you, placing the hands on the hips as a, almost a, you know, a, a sort of prompt as to where to focus with every kind of, brilliant breath that you take in and out. Begin to track feeling in the body. So this is actually our intent today. It's a very big forest yoga intent. If you've ever read Fierce Medicine by Anna Forrest, she, she goes into quite a lot of detail about this, but this is a fundamental principle of embodying your yoga practice that you and it is a sort of training in a way that you train yourself to track sensations and feeling in the body you notice things right you, you do it really differently to other forms of exercise where often your body is just doing something repetitively and, and you're you're not really feeling into it So as you slow your breath down, notice sensations moving through the body, possibly around the hip area, because it's quite a big opening. So you might notice pressure, you might notice heat, you might notice tension, muscular tension. Maybe you get a sense of caving in, like a hollowing out as a sort of, emptiness in the sensation that that often happens so those are the physical kind of feelings just keep breathing steadily and noticing those things moving through your body and as we work through the practice you might be able to peel a layer like you might be able to get a little bit underneath these physical things and, and notice there's, that there might be an emotion underneath there, there might be a, um, a real sense of what that feeling actually means to you, what it's signaling for you. And again, it's just an observation, you're just observing. Let's do three rounds of Shivananda to focus the breath. Take a slow, steady inhale and feel that breath press into the back rib cage. Hold your breath at the top of the inhale and let your hips soften a little bit underneath the palms of your hands. And then open your mouth and sigh it out. Releasing the jaw, letting the back of the skull soften. Two more like this. I want you to do it completely at your own speed. Take a long, slow inhale and feel it move up the back body. Hold your breath for as long as is interesting and notice what you feel within the held breath. Are you subconsciously gripping? Could you adjust? And then as you sigh out, feel for the release that that offers up. 
Last one, very slow, inhale. Hold your breath. Be curious about the space and the quiet within the held breath. And then exhale out. Take your hands to the outside edge of your thighs if they were in badacon and draw them together. And then roll onto one side and press yourself up to seated slowly, no rushing. When you come into a seated position, we're gonna move into shoelace. So I'd like you to um, take your, we'll start with the, um, the left, uh, the right leg, the right leg, definitely the right leg. <laughs> and place it away from the crotch. I get very confused when I do this. And then you pick up your left leg and you hook the foot on top of the knee. And the, the idea is that the feet are relatively flexed and you've stacked your shins. This may be too much. In which case, place a block in front of your right knee and put your left foot on it. So when you look down, you've got a very big open triangular shape. Feet away from the groin. Just for a moment, sit up, place your hands on the lower ribs. As you inhale, lift your front ribs away from the belly button for some additional length. And then release and let the shoulders soften behind you. And notice it'll be probably a little bit more obvious in the outside edge of your left hip. Allow for some softness. Let's do this, let's do a simple side bend. Right hand to side of hip. Bottom cheek, very firmly rooted down. Take an inhale, reach your left arm up. Extend into ribs, wrap the top arm. So it's like a side bend with extra, extra side bits. Because this shoelace position for the legs is an external rotation of the hips and it gets a little juicy in there. Can you still slow your breaths down and track the sensations, however unusual that you feel right now in your body? You're really curious about them, how they shift, how they move. This top left arm is gonna float down. You will frame your left foot with both fingertips. Take a breath in, lift up. So you're slightly twisted to the right and a, a version of forward fold across towards the foot. If you feel more open, you might walk your hands around the corner. Take another breath in, lift your diaphragm up and lean towards the right. This is quite intense, find a placement that works for you. Wash, and it really is a washing sensation, your breath through the outside edge of your left hip. And the, the physical sensation will be very obvious now. What, what's going on underneath that? What's the layer beneath? Open the mouth side out. <sighs> On a big inhale, lift yourself up. Take your legs out in front of you, give them a shake. Maybe a particular thump into that left hip. It gets kind of, it's had a bit of a roasting. Let's do the other side. Pick up the left foot, have it away from your crotch. Place the right foot on top of the knee. Everything is flexed and stacked. If it's helpful to put the foot further forwards on a block, please do that. Hands on front ribs. Extend your breath upwards, lifting into your solar plexus. Settle your seat down and then release the arms and just feel for this rise up, right? So you're, you, can, you can feel the stuff in the hips, it's there, but you've got it under control. Place your left hand to edge of mat. Inhale, reach up through the right fingertips. 
Don't let the butt lift off the mat, press it down. Inhale into armpit, wrap it up. So take some steady breaths across the flank side of the hip. There's a tightness possibly in the low right quadrant of the back. The head relax. Both feet actively pressing downwards wherever they are. Feel a connection through them. And then float this, this right hand down. Frame your top foot. Take a breath up through the body. And maybe a forward fold. By the way, if your hands don't touch the mat, please put some blocks underneath them. I'm aware that I've got really long arms. <laughs> proportions of I'm biased towards them right if you want to go deeper twist around the corner a little more press through both bottom cheeks inhale lengthen the belly as you exhale soften forwards outside edge of right hip piriformis it's a pigeony sensation breathe right into the middle of the feeling Focus your attention to the quality of your breath. Stay with yourself. And then inhale, lift yourself back up. Uh, you'll be very grateful to know that we'll take the legs out, give them a little shake. Straddle. Wide open, pulling the bum out from behind you. This is going to feel a really nice counter pose. It takes all the pressure off the outside edge. Inner thighs reaching. Let's take a forward fold. Breathe up. Flex your feet. Press through the big toe pad of each foot. And maybe even with some side to side motion, just come forwards. Long front body. Where you get to, not important. Are you breathing upwards? Lengthening the spine and then exhaling, releasing inner thighs. Go easier on yourself sometimes, right? Notice your tendency to press too much, if that's your thing. You might be the reverse of this. You might be the... I don't like going anywhere near the stuff that feels uncomfortable. I just back off all the time. Notice all these things that we do, right? These patterns. Find the middle ground. Take a breath in, press yourself all the way up to straight. Hands to underside of knees and help your legs back together. Grab a prop, either a brick or a roll. And come and lie down for some abdominals. Place the prop between your inner thighs. Um, lift your feet up off the mat so they are stacked. So knees are stacked over hips, feet active. Interlace hands behind the base of the skull, wrap your elbows. We're doing a sort of variation of elbow to knee. Take a really big inhale and partially lift your shoulders off the mat. Hold your breath, flatten the low back, curl tailbone. As you exhale, reach your elbows towards the left thigh and straighten your right leg directly up to the ceiling. Squeeze the roll between the inner thighs, pull belly down. Inhale back to center, big breath in. Hold the breath, flatten low back, squeeze inner thighs. As you exhale, reach elbows to right thigh, extend the left leg straight up to ceiling, Curl tailbone a second time, pull belly down. Inhale back to center, huge breath. Hold the breath, curl tailbone, squeeze prop. As you exhale, elbows to left thigh, right leg straight up, spread the toes apart. Lift out of your tailbone, pull belly down. Inhale back to center, soften the back of the head. Hold the breath, curl tailbone, exhale, elbows to right thigh. Leg, left leg straight up, squeeze the prop a second time, wrap your shoulders. 
Inhale back to center, full breath. One more round, hold breath, curl tailbone. Exhale, elbows to left thigh, right leg goes straight up. Squeeze the prop a second time, curl tailbone again. Lift your gaze, pull belly down. Inhale back to center, big breath. Hold the breath, curl tailbone, exhale, elbows to right thigh, left leg straight up, spread your toes, squeeze your inner thighs, it's all beginning to get very hot and flustered, pull belly down. Inhale back to center, head and shoulders down, feet down. Keep the prop between the inner thighs, tuck your feet towards the bum, let's do bridge. Arms relaxed by the side of the body, inhale, Press inner thighs onto the prop. Start to exhale and lift your hips. So just in case you weren't aware, the inner thigh line here is assisting you. It's allowing you to add some additional support to your bridge pose. Because when the inner thighs are squeezing gently, combined with the bum, <laughs> and active feet, you can drive power through the front of your legs. So feel like your thighs are moving forwards out of the hips. And then increase the breath right through the front ribs. Stick the underside of your glutes to the top of the hamstrings firmly. And soften the shoulders. Take three more breaths and track the feelings that are going through your body. Track the physical representation of those feelings. Where are you feeling this? <laughs> and you might be getting well into your stories, right? About, oh God, I hate this. My thighs, my really hurting now. Move away from the stories. What do you really feel? What's really going on? I promise you, if you take a slow, steady breath, it makes it a little more manageable. To come out of the pose, inhale widely. Squeeze the prop, tuck tailbone. As you exhale, lower with real attention to detail. Top back, mid back, low back, all the way to the mat. Take the prop from between your inner thighs. Come back into Baddha right? We were there right at the beginning. Open the thighs wide, knees to the side of the mat. Soles of feet touch. Place hands on hip flexors. What's shifted? What feels a little different? Maybe nothing feels different. That's also an option, right? But you are aware of this. You're taking the time to pay attention. Hands to outside edge of thighs, draw them together. Roll on to one side, come up to seated really slowly. Don't use your neck, try to relax it as you come up. Let's do dolphin with the palms up. Grab that cork block back at the front of the mat. It's going to be used as a little measure. So the edges of your little fingers will be on the block. So when you look at your hands on the mat, it's gonna look like that. They're gonna spread really wide, thumbs rotating outwards. To get your forearms in the right position, actually lift them up off the mat and turn them to face up and then reset them down so that you get a real sense of the forearm being um, at a rotational different angle from the elbow. Press tops of forearms into the floor, spread the fingers wide. The hands tend to claw up as soon as we lose focus. So keep that as a, a reminder to do it. Curl the toes, take a breath into your upper back ribs, push it away. And then straighten the legs as you exhale out. Core scoops up, thumbs, fingers separate. The thumbs rolling to outside edge of mat, wrap your shoulder blades. This is the perfect opportunity to notice this subtle wrapping of shoulder blades around the sides of the armpits. Shake out the head. The prop that you had between the inner thighs, imagine it's still there. 
Squeeze onto it, lift the tailbone higher. Open your palms again in case they got crumpled up. Push through the whole forearm, even the wrist joint. Feel it press through the mat. Three more breaths. Track the pathway of the breath. Track the feeling that's running beneath the breath. <sighs> Very slowly, lower your knees and remove the block. Turn your hands the other way. Let's come straight into down dog. Curl the toes, straighten the legs. Put weight into right foot. Inhale, raise the left leg up, spreading the feet. To you on the hip out for a little counter pose. Hang the left foot near the right buttock and then raise up on a breath in the left thigh higher. Shake out the head, evil, 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 even weight on both hands. <laughs> Option to stay here or flip for your dog. Lower the left foot behind you. Roll onto outside edge of right foot and sweep your left arm skywards, opening the chest. Hips rise up, there is action in the legs. Soften the head, pressing through the right armpit. Slowly float the left hand down, plank, everyone joins. Lift the core, suck it up, tuck tailbone. Exhaling, knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga, graze biceps to ribs. Inhale, low cobra, hands a little forward of shoulders, lengthen the front ribs through the arms, feel for a tuck of tailbone. And as you exhale, pull your front ribs further along the mat. Hands under shoulders, down dog. Take a big breath in down dog. Feeling for hands actively pressing into the mat. Left foot takes the weight, inhale, right leg raises. Reach out of the foot, feel for lifting. Bend the right knee, hang the foot, yawning the hip, open through the front of the hip flexor. Right thigh can extend further if you think about it. Stay here or flip your dog, lower right foot behind you. Roll onto outside edge of left foot and reach up with the arm. A little mini back bend here as you press your hips a little higher. <sighs> Jaw stay soft. Right hand floats back, plank. Inhale, lift belly. As you exhale, knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra. Tops of the feet touch the mat as you pull your shoulder blades together. Exhale, down dog. Very gently, step. And it doesn't actually matter which foot step, maybe say left foot forwards and swivel yourself so you come into straddle forward fold. So toes pigeoned about three feet apart, hang down the center line and let the back of the head soften. Your hands can be on the floor, just soft. Maybe you feel more comfortable gliding them down the outside edge of the legs and grabbing the ankles so you can pull your chest further through the legs. Maybe put a micro bend in the knees and feel for breathing spaciously across the back of the sacral area. So you're kind of letting it all hang out. What are the feelings now? What's the physical sensation? What's the feeling running underneath it? Forward folds are all about letting go. Letting it all kind of slide a little bit. Doesn't have to be quite so perfect. <sighs> Soften your knees a lot. Put your hands on your hips. Come up to standing with a flat back all the way through. Oh, I'm chopped in half. <laughs> You'll take your feet back together. Come and stand at the front of your mat for sun salutation. Set yourself up with whatever props you need. A bit of padding for knees, music.
Before we begin our suns, let's just get a little warmed up through the hips. Take a big breath in. I know my head's disappeared. Reach your arms up. Come on to tippy toes. And then walk your feet a little further apart. As you take your next exhale, start to bend your knees. You're still on your tiptoes. Come all the way down into a squat position. And put your hands, maybe fingertips on the floor. Turn your toes out and see if you can get your heels as close to the mat as you can, malasana. So elbows, press the inner thighs away, bum sinks down. Your heels can be off the floor for sure. Now, this is the one thing I want to tell you. It's really tempting to just collapse forwards and really curl into your belly. Inhale, lift space right through your diaphragm and press your elbows into the edge of the thighs. And lift through the crown of the head. Let the bum feel heavy. And just swirl your breath around the outside edge of the hips. However, um, this is unfamiliar pose for most of us, right? In Western societies, you don't do much squatting. One more breath. Always so much harder than you think it's gonna be. Hands, fingertips to the floor, press into your feet, lift yourself up to standing, come through whatever version of that works for you. Take a really long inhale, reach the arms up, telescope the lips. Exhale, forward fold, hang down, soften the jaw. Left leg lunges, knee to mat. Inhale, breathe upwards, feel the pressing top of left shin to mat. Hands down, exhale, plank, step back. Lift the belly, tuck tailbone as you exhale, knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, scoop it forwards. Exhale, more length, down dog. Lunge, left leg forwards, right knee to mat. Press firmly through both feet and engage the right buttock. Float to forward fold, exhale. Inhale, root to rise. Press through your feet, lift up through the arms. Exhale, hands at heart center, soften the shoulders. Let's go again, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Lunge, right knee down. Breathe upwards, telescoping the ribs. Wrap your shoulders. Exhale, hands to mat, plank, step back. Take an additional inhale, push through the arms, scoop the belly. Knees lower as you exhale, chest lowers, control it. Feel like you have it within your grasp. Inhale, reach the front ribs through the arms. Exhale, down dog. Right leg steps forward, left knee down, low lunge. Inhale, reach the arms. Squeeze the left buttock, notice the connection there. Float to forward fold. Root to rise, come up to standing. Exhale, hands at heart centers. Inhale, reach up. Forward fold, jaw, shake it up. <sighs> Left leg lunges, knee to mat. Breathe, feel the wrapping of the shoulders as you activate your fingertips. Hands down, step back to plank. Look at your hands, they're still pushing into the mat, lift the belly. Knees lower, chest lowers, graze it down. Low cobra, inhale. Tops of feet active, lengthen the inner leg line. Exhale, down dog. Lunge, left leg to front of mat, right knee down. Spend a little more time thinking about the front hip. Let's just pause here, press through the right hip flexor, wrap your arms. Three more breaths. Neck softens. Float hands to frame the left foot, forward fold. 
Inhale, root to rise, come up. Exhale, hands up, heart center. Let's go again, right side. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, hang down. Right leg lunges, knee to mat. We were just here, feel the space, lift your arms. Hands down, plank, step back. Take a breath in plank, lift the core, tuck tailbone. Knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga. Inhale, draw your ribs through. Exhale, down dog. Right leg lunges forward, left knee to mat. Arms extend skywards. We're pausing here on the left side now. If you feel you've got the capacity, place <laughs> a little bit more emphasis on extending into right hip flexor. So you might sink the pubic bone towards the right heel, but add a little tuck of left buttock to support underneath. Soften the upper body, feel for pressing through the left foot. And notice your breathing, take the tracking, your beautiful kind of <laughs> investigative eye and just feel the breath and what's coming behind it. Hands frame the right foot, forward fold, exhale out. Come up to standing, inhale. Exhale, hands at heart center. Just pause a moment, feel for softening the shoulders down. A little more connection to your lengthened tailbone. In your next inhale, lift your ribs away from the hips, lengthening the front of the body. And then soften the shoulders. Let's do two part vignettes. Inhale, chair pose. Bottom sinks low. Tuck your tailbone, lift your chest. Exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs, hang down. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, flatten it out. Step or hop to plank. Take a breath in plank, scoop the belly. As you exhale, knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga. And then draw yourself forwards on a low cobra. Feel for glute connection. Exhale, down dog. Left foot steps forward, warrior two. Front foot straight, back foot 90 degrees. Come up. So press through the left front of thigh. Feel for a spacious opening as you kind of increase the length of the left side ribs and then release the arms let's do eagles so wrap your left arm on top of right double wrap if you can get it shoulders go back they soften down we wrap forwards pressing the forearms away from the face so i want you to feel the depth of your left knee bend if you are if you think you can go a bit deeper, go a bit deeper and really feel like you're plunging yourself into your hips, like you're really exploring the kind of physical sensation there. And then to distract you from that, move your breath pattern into the upper back ribs and work very subtly at expanding this area. Here's my top tip from Sunday. I worked on this a lot. You've got to lengthen through the solar plexus to allow softening sometimes in other areas. Everyone inhale, lift the ribs away from the belly button. And then as you exhale, slide your shoulder blades down. One more breath. and then release the arms, unravel. Listen up, we're gonna do a forward fold in our warrior two, straight down the center line. Hands come to the floor. So forward fold in warrior two. Now we're doing head to ankle prep stage one. Start to walk your hands through your legs, turn the fingers away from you and feel like you're reaching your fingertips as far through the legs as they can go. 
Deepen the left knee bend. We're all about the hip now. You feel it, right? The intensity. Soften the upper back. Feel for letting the head fall towards the mat. Arms reach through the legs. Fingers creeping away. <sighs> Lines breath out. Come out of the pose very slowly. Walk your hands to frame the left foot. Step back into down dog. Take a huge breath in down dog. Wrap your elbows, lift up through the sit bones. Feel for connecting to your tailbone and visualize it being pulled to the ceiling. Let's do that on the other side. Step right foot forwards, warrior two, eagle arms. Start as you mean to go on. Press the right thigh forwards a little more and feel like there's kind of a lift out of this hip socket. Hmm. And straighten yourself up, arms come in front, right arm on top of left, double wrap. The temptation to collapse forwards, rectify, lift your front belly, shoulders go back down and wrap again. And just when you thought you were getting it together, deepen the right knee bend. Really notice where you can go with that. Left foot is an anchor, left inner thigh very much supporting you. Breathe up through the front ribs. Soften the shoulders as you exhale. So there's a lot going on in this pose. There'll be a lot of feelings. There's a lot of tracking to do. Get with that, right? Feel it. You might move all over the place. You might be in the hip, in the upper back. <laughs> back again, front belly. Side out. Feel your feet press more into the mat. Unravel the arms, hang them down. Here's your forward fold. Inhale, ribs extend, you get length. And you take your beautifully long front rib cage down into a forward fold. Hands on the mat, hang. Just get the sense of it, right knee bends deeper. Now walk your hands through your legs. Fingers point away from you and it feels like you're pulling yourself through your warrior two legs. Back of the skull softens. Breathe, right? Swirl your breath around the front right hip. And then creep your fingers even further behind you. Allowing the shoulder blades to slide towards the back of the head. Almost like they just kind of go. Let it all go. <sighs> enough going on in this pose without holding tension. Come out of the pose slowly. Walk hands to frame the right foot. Step back into down dog. Take a breath. Lower the knees. Dolphin hands clasped. Place your forearms down on the mat. Tripod position. Press two edges of the Arms, inhale, balloon into upper back ribs, curl the toes, straighten the legs. So just to change your perspective, push more through the forearms and feel for lift up. And try to take the weightiness of this dolphin out of the shoulder girdle and instead scoop your belly up. And frankly, just enjoy being upside down in an inversion that doesn't involve your hips <laughs> quite so much. A bit of light relief. Squeeze in the thighs gently together, notice the change. And then knees lower, hands separate, down dog. Second vignette, step your left foot forwards, warrior one. Front foot straight, back foot turned out. Make an adjustment to draw your right hip forwards as you deepen your left knee bend. 
The little toe of the right foot is rolling towards the edge of the mat. Clasped hands open the chest. Breathe upwards, right through the diaphragm. Ooh, so much space. Take a breath in, let's do humble warrior. Forward fold, hinging at the hips. Lean with a long front body down. You might get to halfway, take an additional breath, unfurl yourself. And then as you exhale, slide, maybe to inner edge of left thigh, maybe you rest your shoulder on the left thigh, head might hang. Icing on the cake, hands reach directly up, rinsing shoulders as the shoulder blades squeeze together. So it's back into the left hip socket. There's a drive through the left foot. You feel it rise up the calf, the shin. <sighs> Soften the belly. Release the hands. Swivel yourself to the long edge of the mat for straddle forward fold, moving into flank stretch. So pigeon toed, three feet apart, hang down the middle. Take your left hand and underneath you and grab your right calf or ankle firmly. And then draw your left hip back in space, very important. Head hangs, right hand has options. It's either on top of the left or you're pressing it into the mat near your right foot. It could also be on a block. This stretch is the whole side of your left body, right? Micro bend the left elbow, pull it towards the floor. Maybe you rest the cheekbone of your left cheek on the nook of your left bicep. And arc your breath into left side ribs, stretching your body from hip to tip of elbow on the left side. And if you can't feel the stretch, pull your elbow towards the mat more. <sighs> Left hip draws back, it's stuck to a flat surface behind you. Flubber at the lips. <sighs> now the pose slowly, walk hands towards the left foot, front of the mat. Step back into plank, take a breath. Lift your core, tuck your tailbone as you exhale, knees lower, chest lowers, modified chaturanga. Inhale, low cobra, particularly activate your glute muscles. So feel like your butt is with you, draw yourself forwards and down, exhale, down dog. Warrior one, step right foot forwards, come all the way up to standing. Take the opposite interlace with your hands and open your chest. Hands clasped, deepen your right knee bend. <sighs> Lengthen rib cage up towards the chin almost, like you're kind of lifting out of yourself. And then as you exhale with a long body, forward fold. Get to where you get to. Maybe there's a pause where you take an additional lengthening breath and you reset. Maybe the whole pose is resetting. It's inhaling more length, exhaling more depth. Track the feelings racing around the right hip. Stabilize those with your attachment. It's almost like you attach more to the feet now. You've really noticed them, the left foot as well. Head hangs, rinse out the shoulders, lift the arms skywards. <sighs> Shake out the head. Release the arms, straddle, forward fold, moving into flank stretch. Adjust yourself facing the long edge of the mat. Pigeons, toes of pigeons, hang down. Oh, and take a breath, right? Because just hanging down in forward fold is delicious. Right hand grabs left ankle or calf. Pull on it firmly, drawing the right hip back. Left hand on top of right hand or pressing into the floor for additional kind of leverage. 
let the head hang. You're just kind of letting it go. Micro bend the right elbow and pull it towards the floor. And then breathe. This is like, it, it has a sort of echo of lounge lunge as you wrap your breath through the sides of your ribs on the right side. Track the feelings of letting go, of allowance, right? Of just accepting exactly where you are. How do those manifest in your body? How many will you let them manifest? Come out of the pose, walk to frame the right foot, step back into down dog. Step your left foot forwards for head to ankle preps. You're in warrior two feet. You're hanging down. The left hand grabs a handful of the left thigh, tractions it forwards as you lock out the arm. And then that forces you to bend towards the right. Right hand on the mat in front of the foot, possibly on a block if you can't quite reach. Please use props to make it easier for you. There is a drive as you plunge into the left knee bend. And then the same feeling of space we had in flank stretch as you inhale into left side ribs. I suggest a micro bend in the right knee if all you feel in this pose is inner thigh stretch. The head hang. The length, the straightness of your left arm is pushing the thigh away from you. Tractioning your own hip. Side out. Come out of the pose slowly. Walk your hands towards the left foot. Bring the right knee to the mat. Two options, right, for the final pose. Head to ankle stage one or proper head to ankle. Both really good, right? Starting position, low lunge, both hands to inner edge of foot. We can all do this, but I just want you to watch the screen a moment. So this will be it. You just hang down. It looks like not much, but it's a forward fold straight down into the inner edge of your leg. Otherwise, I'll show you this front on. You might get your left shoulder to move towards the underside of the left shin and you place your hand through it. Flat to mat. The right hand grabs the left ankle and you put the elbow on the floor. And here you are. This is already a thing, right? You're down here, hanging down. Last bit of the pose. You might straighten the back leg and hang your head down and work to get your head towards the back of the calf. Yeah, so those are the options. Let's do it together. Left leg is forward, right knee bend. You're in a low lunge. Everyone place both hands to inner edge of left foot. Take a breath in and then just bend your elbows and literally hang down your inner leg line. So. If you could see it from the other side, it looks like this. You might start to manoeuvre your left arm, left shoulder under the left thigh and place the hand on the mat next to your foot. Maybe do a little rocking forwards and back to release into the hip. Right hand grabs left ankle, elbow, forearm on the mat, diagonally, uh, not diagonally, perpendicular. Breathe. Last bit. Straighten the right leg, maybe turn it to warrior one. Start to get your head to move towards the back of the shin. And you feel it in the head and you need to breathe. Whatever version of this you're doing, is sufficient. Beautiful work, everyone on screen. Amazing. There's a tendency to let the butt come down. Lift your butt up more, it gets easier, weirdly. 
Come out of the pose. It's a lot on that left hip. Down dog. Give yourself a real pedal out. Could feel really nice here to just raise the left leg up, yawn the hip out and counter all that kind of squish. And then lower the left leg down. Step right foot forwards, warrior two, head to ankle prep. So you're in warrior two, hanging down. Right hand, traction's right thigh away. Lock out the arms, straighten it, push the fleshy part away. Lean to the left, hand on the mat. Big, spacious breaths right into the front of the right hip. Warming it up for the next stage. Put a micro bend in your left knee if that's troublesome. <sighs> Shake out the back of the head. Drive the right thigh forwards. Breath moves between the ribs, between intercostals. <sighs> Come out of the pose. Turn yourself towards the right foot and lower the left knee. So we're in a low lunge position, right leg forwards, left knee down. Both hands to inner edge of the right knee. Take an inhale. And then you just hang down. This is Head to ankle, stage one. And in a way, staying here for a couple of breaths <laughs> notifies the right hip as to what's coming. Right shoulder might slide underneath, hand to mat. Left hand grabs right ankle, elbow down. Hang the head. Option to straighten the left leg, warrior one position. Start to manoeuvre yourself under your right thigh, shin. <laughs> it's like a twister. <sighs> Lift the butt a little higher. <laughs> I'd say track feeling. Yes, track feeling, but it's pretty bloody obvious. <laughs> Breathe. Each side might feel different. <sighs> Come out of the pose. Step back slowly into down dog when you're ready. No rushing. If you're in that head to ankle and you're thinking, yeah, I could be here for a few more breaths, you stay there. And then lower your knees and come all the way back to the mat. Okie dokie, before Shavasana. Let's just have a little feel around for what was going on there. We're gonna come back into shoelace and do a forward fold in shoelace. So start by picking up your right foot away from the crotch and then placing your left foot on top of the knee. Again, if you need a little more space, you put the left foot on a block. So I'm hoping that once you've kind of you know, taking a few breaths, this feels a little more accessible. Oh, yeah, I remember being here right at the beginning when it was really hard. When you look down, there is a big open triangle. If your feet are like this near your crotch, that's not it, right? You have to push your feet away from the crotch for the external rotation of the hips. Hands by the side of the hips. Take an inhale, lift your chest. And I do like a bit of this, a sway. It's like, ooh, I'm sort of getting there. If you can't reach the floor, you can use um, props again, right? Long back, forward fold. And the forward fold could be mini, 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 because you don't need much to feel it in the left hip. Let the chin soften to the chest. Your back is still long. Shoulders glide downwards. Teeth separate, the jaw gets very busy here. 
the cloggy kind of stuff in the hips. There's a lot of layering, a lot of holding in of emotions, trauma. It's all there. It's all kind of there, right under the surface. And slowly come up. Shake out your legs. Give your left hip a little bit of light relief. Let's do the other side. Pick up the left foot. It's not near the crotch, it's away. Big gap. Right foot hooks on top. If the knee's up, this is okay, right? As long as the bum is down. If your bum is off the floor, maybe you need that right foot a little further away from you. Just take a few moments to find your diaphragm length. And then with a little motion, maybe side to side, come forwards. Come forwards to where you can still feel the breath moving in, your, in the right direction, right? It's not, you're not holding the breath, you're not gripping, you're not waiting for it to be over. <laughs> well, we're probably all waiting for it to be over. Particularly on the exhale, move, right? Shift something. Shift a thought, shift a sensation, peel back a layer. <sighs> Don't think about it so much, feel it a little more. And then really slowly come up. <laughs> Legs out. This is the best bit, right? Take them out. Come and lie down. Straight into Shavasana because these hips are gonna guide you into Shavasana. You're gonna think, when you take your legs wide on the mat, and tuck your tailbone and you'll be like, oh, wow, super different. Maybe you do Shavasana with your hands on your hips so you can really appreciate the contact. Back body softens towards the mat. Feel the support from the ground up. Let your feet Hang open, thighs soft. Close the eyes, breath comes to a natural pattern of breathing that feels really nourishing. Shavasana.
Start to slowly deepen your breaths. Move your fingers, your hands, your feet, your toes a little bit and extend your arms above you and then reach your breath from toe to fingertips. Exhaling, hug your knees towards your chest. As you pull your knees down and lengthen your tailbone, just notice your outside edge of hips, what they feel like, what the front of the hip socket feels like. Extend your left arm up above you and roll onto your left side and pause. The jaw soften here. Like the, it's almost like the edge of your face. Your jaw just feels like, oh, it's just going to let go. My advice to you is to soften into the discomfort. Accept it. Know that it's gifting you growth, fuel, and grit. I wish you the comfort within the discomfort, the stillness within the unease, the softening within the stretch. But mostly I wish you the match that ignites and revives the fire that burns within you. Very gently press yourself up to seated. As you take a breath in, just notice the external rotation of your hips. You always feel like your knees feel a little heavier, a little more soft. My soul honors your soul. Namaste. Brilliant. Well done, everyone. Hip-tastic. That's what that is. <laughs>